Okay, so my question for you is what do fractions tell us to do? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Divide. 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 So if we know fractions are division, can I rewrite this as division? Yes. Okay, so the top fraction, I could put the division symbol. I could take this bottom fraction and just move it up. Now, I crossed this one out because I don't want you to think it's in both places. I moved it. Yes? It's not in the bottom anymore. It's on the side. So now, how would I solve this? The same, yeah. We, we know we have to factor any piece that factors. What's the only piece that factors? Which piece? The x squared minus 4, right? Okay, the other three pieces don't. And what do I have to do because it's division? I need to flip it and multiply. So let's rewrite the first fraction. I have x plus 2 over how would I factor that denominator? Well, it's a perfect square minus a perfect square, so I know x times x is x squared, right? And what times what is 4? 2 times 2, so this becomes x minus 2, x plus 2. I'm going to change it to multiplication, because anytime we have division, don't we change it to multiplication? Mm -hmm. And what do we do when we change it to multiplication? Flip it. A lot of people were changing it to multiplication and forgetting to flip it. Wild animals up there. I do not know. <laughs> okay, so once I flip it, I cross out what matches. What matches? The x plus 2, x plus 2, x minus 2, x minus 2. So what's my final answer? Is it x? 1 over x, because where is that x? At the bottom. So that x has to stay on the bottom. And I can't have an empty top, so I put a 1, and my answer is 1 over x. Be careful, because if your answer, what's left is in the bottom, it does have to stay there, because if I say 2, is that the same as 1 half? No, if the 2 is in the bottom, it's very different. $2 is different than half of a dollar, okay? I'd rather have $2.50, right? Okay, so because they're different. Any questions with that one? Okay, example two, we're not going to go all the way through it. We're just going to talk about setting it up, but it's... It gets repetitive, and we're gonna set up. We're gonna go all the way through the other ones. Um, so I just want to talk about setting it up. What's different on this one? We do. And is this a fraction? No. no. And I need it to be a fraction. So how would I make it a fraction? Yeah, just put it over one. So when I rewrite it as division, I get x plus three over one. And then to solve, I would rewrite the first one. I would factor it, which we're not going to do. Change it to multiplication and flip. Now, we would keep going, but we're not going to because we're not going to solve that one. Does that make sense? Do you understand the process on that one, though? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so look at number three. What's different about number three that we didn't see on number one and two? Yeah, we don't have a single fraction over a single fraction. And that was literally the first rule if we look back at the steps. It says make it one nice happy fraction on top, one nice happy fraction on bottom. Okay, we almost want to treat them like they're separate problems until we have our fractions. So, I'm going to get a sticky note. Maybe. <laughs> Goodness. Crickets. Okay. And we're going to just focus on the top. We're going to ignore the bottom. And we need this to become one fraction. Well, this is back to addition and subtraction. What has to happen before I can combine them and make one fraction? I have to have what? The same what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to have a common denominator. Preferably the least common denominator, but a common denominator at all will make me be able to combine them. So if this is 7, what do I want this denominator to be? 7. And if nothing's there, if I put a 7 in the bottom, as long as I multiply the top by 7 too, it's still equal. Because technically I could cross those 7s out and I still have x, right? So now I can rewrite this as 7x minus x over 7. Well, does that simplify? Yes. What would it simplify to? 
Well, what's 7x minus x or minus 1x? What's 7 minus 1? So it becomes 6x over 7. So there's the top. We created a single fraction. We even simplified it. And we don't even have to factor it because there's no plus or minus anymore. So that's nice. Any questions with that? Okay, so now let's try it on the bottom. I have a denominator of 14. I need a denominator of what here? 14. 14, so I can combine it. So if I give the bottom of 14, I have to multiply the top by 14 as well. So that becomes 14x plus x over 14. And what's 14x plus x or plus 1x? And so there we have it. So we have a single fraction over a single fraction. Now, if I don't want to rewrite it as division every single time, is that OK? Because I know what am I going to do with the bottom piece? Flip it, right? Because don't we flip it every single time? So I can change it to multiplication, flip it, and move it up. Because if I just move it up, I have to keep it as division. But we don't want to divide. We want to multiply, right? Mm -hmm. So to change it to multiplication, I also have to flip it. So I'm kind of skipping a step because I know none of us want to keep, keep rewriting these over and over and over again, right? OK. So now how would I simplify this? What cancels? Mm -hmm. Well, don't the x's cancel? Mm -hmm. And then from there, is it just a calculator problem? Yeah, because yeah, all that's left is numbers. And I can type it as a single fraction, alpha y equals enter. I have 6 times 14 on top over 7 times 15, and that equals 4 over 5. Okay, so when you're done writing that down, I want you to flip to the back. Okay, so same steps. We want this to be a single fraction. So if I have a denominator of x here and these don't have a denominator at all, what do I want all the denominators to be? x, because I don't want to change them if I don't have to. So if I put an x on bottom, I also have to put an x on top, x on bottom, x on top. Do they all have x in the denominator now? So when I rewrite it, I have a single denominator of x. Well, what's 3x times x? 3x squared. Negative 5 times x is just negative 5x. And then the 2 I didn't change, so it's just minus 2. Any questions with that? OK, so now let's look at the bottom. What do I want my denominator to be? x. So over x, if I put a 1 on the bottom, I have to put it on the top, bottom and top. So my whole denominator is x. What is my numerator? 3x squared, 3x squared plus, 10x, plus 10x plus 3. Now, I know I'm going to have to rewrite this, and I'm going to have to rewrite it as multiplication. But to simplify it, what am I going to have to do? To snowflake. Yeah. I thought you said simplify it first. It took me, I don't know. It took my brain a second to process. I don't know why. Okay, we're going to have to snowflake. Okay, so when we snowflake, I'm going to go kind of quickly because we know how to do this, hopefully. B is negative 5. A times C is negative 6. What multiplies to give me negative 6 and adds to give me negative 5 is positive 1 and negative 6. Well, 3 over 1 does not simplify. So I'm going to come over here to start rewriting it. This is the top fraction with x as my denominator. But 3 over 6 does simplify. What does 3 over 6 simplify to? 1 half. And then remember, bring over your x, bring over your subtraction, so it becomes x minus 2. 
Now, I want to change this to what? I don't want it to be division. What do I want it to be? Mm -hmm. Multiplication. So what's going to be on top now? The x, because I'm flipping the denominator, and then I factor the bottom. So 3x, 3x, b is 10, 3 times 3 is 9. Anytime the b and the a times c on top are 1 apart, it's always going to be 1 in itself, so 1 times 9. 1 times 9 is 9, 1 plus 9 is 10. 3 over 1 does not simplify. But 3 over 9 does. What does 3 over 9 simplify to? Hopefully you all are thinking 1 third. Bring over your x, and that's positive, so it becomes x plus 3. So what cancels? 3x plus 1. What else? X. So what's my final answer? x minus 2 over x plus 3. Y'all are exactly right. Whoop, might help if you can see it, sorry. So I know that one was a lot. Are you going to be factoring on all of them? No. Okay, so don't panic. Yes? Okay. Some of them, a lot of them are just going to have a perfect square minus a perfect square, which are simpler. Okay, there's no snowflake with that. Two more. We're almost done. Okay, look at example five. Cool thing about example five is the bottom. Is the bottom already a single fraction? Cool. We only have to worry about the numerator. However, I have two totally different denominators because this has a, yes, this has a, yes, but this has a plus one, and that makes it stuck like glue. When I make a common denominator, what do I have to do to create it? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. You have to multiply. You cannot add to create a common denominator. It would be really nice if we could just put plus one, plus one. That would be great, but we can't. To create a common denominator, we have to multiply. So the only way to make these match is to literally just multiply them by each other. So if this has an a plus one, because that's stuck like glue with that plus sign, I have to do a plus one on this side. Well, what I do to the bottom that's different, I have to also do to the top. Well, now this has a times a plus one. So this has just a plus one. It needs that a. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So now they have a common denominator of a parentheses a plus 1. Now, do we want to rewrite this a billion times as we simplify the numerator? Do you all remember when we were doing the adding and subtracting unit and I was separating, like I was writing the simplify, I was simplifying the numerator separate and then putting it together? Because we don't want to rewrite as we simplify over and over and over again. Do you all remember what I'm talking about? Y'all are looking at me like y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, when we were doing adding and subtracting, do you remember I would bring the numerator down, simplify it, then put it together? Because do we want to really rewrite the fraction every single time we simplify? Mm -hmm. No, because that would have been us rewriting it four, five times. We don't want to rewrite the fraction five times if we don't have to. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. So I'm going to simplify the numerator. So I have 1 times a, or a times 1, which is just a. I have a minus in the middle, and then I have 1 times a plus 1, which is just a plus 1. So I'm just simplifying my numerator. Well, what do I have to do here? To simplify. Do I need to distribute my negative? Yes, so I have a minus a minus 1. What are my like terms? A. a and A. What's A minus A? Don't they zero each other out? So what's my numerator? Over what's my denominator of the whole thing? 1 over A. What do I do once I have a single fraction over a single fraction? Change it to multiplication and flip it. So what am I going to write? A over 1. So what cancels? The A. Could I technically say the 1 cancels? Yeah, not the negative. The negative still there. But the 1, could. you could. Do you need to cancel a 1? 
No. Okay, it's silly. You could. It doesn't matter. So I have a negative left on top, and I have an A plus 1 on bottom. What do I need to put back on the top to make this work? The 1. If you left your A plus 1 in parentheses, is that okay? Yeah, but do you have to keep your parentheses if everything else cancels? No, so it's up to you. Okay, one more. Okay, this one is not as bad as it looks. If you look at the bottom, I'm writing something down at the very, very bottom. Okay, do you all remember when we were doing laws of exponents, if we had like r to the negative 2 xy over z, what would we do with that r? We would move it to the bottom, and it would become r to the positive 2 and cancel the one on the top, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is similar to that, but not exact. Because the difference is, did we have plus and minus here? No. no. Okay, we do, on example 6, have plus and minus signs. So that is how it creates the fraction over the fraction in a fraction. Okay, so we need to look at this as one piece at a time. So we're just looking at the top. I have this whole thing to the negative x power, or the negative 1 power. So I need to make a fraction, and I need to move it to the bottom. Okay, and it becomes 2x to the positive 1 power, and that cancels. Do I have to write a positive 1 power? No. So this equals 2x on the bottom plus 1. What do I put on top to make this work? 1. Now, the reason I could not just move this whole piece to the bottom of this fraction was because of that plus sign. That plus sign makes this stuck like glue, but the plus sign, does it have a negative one? So could I move the whole thing to the bottom? That's why we had to create its own fraction on top, because this one can't move and they are stuck like glue, okay? That's what makes this a complex fraction. So now, what would my common denominator be? 2x, so if I give this one a 2x at the bottom, I also have to give it at the top. So my numerator becomes 1 plus 1 times 2x, which is just 2x. And how do I rewrite that? If I put it in order, 2x plus 1. The nice thing is when there's plus signs, we just flip-flop it, nothing changes. Any questions with the top? Okay, when you look at the bottom, what's different? There's no parentheses. So is the 2 included in the negative exponent? No. It's just what it's touching. What's the only thing that that negative exponent is touching? The x, so that is the only thing that moves. The 2 stays. The reason the 2 moved on the top is because it was inside parentheses, so it took the whole thing. This one is not, so this becomes x to the positive 1. And we have 2 over x minus 1. Well, what's my LCD going to be? x, so if I give this an x on bottom, I have to give it an x on top. I know my denominator is x, but what do I do to my numerator? Well, when I write it together, it becomes 2 minus 1x. Is that in order? So when I put it in order, what do I need to do? Negative 1x or just negative x plus 2. And what's wrong with it now? Take out the negative, and they become opposite, opposite. So positive, negative. So we just factored it and put it there, so we don't have to do any more things other than reset it up and cancel. So last but not least, what do we do? We want to set it up as what? Um. Multiplication. And to do that, what do we need to do to it? Flip it. So when I flip it and move it up, it becomes x over negative x minus 2. 
and what cancels? The X's. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay, so we're left with 2X plus 1 over, what does my denominator become? Would I write it as 2 minus X minus 2? Well, are we adding and subtracting? What symbol is that? Multiplication. Multiplication. So if I needed to put a number here, this is negative 1. What's 2 times negative 1? Negative 2 parentheses X minus 2. Okay, so this is what you're working on. If you have questions, you can ask.